Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Precipio stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Precipio is a cancer diagnostics company. It delivers the latest in advanced diagnostics and personalized medicine. The company is headquartered in New Haven, Connecticut and was founded in 1997. It went public in 2017 and trades on the NASDAQ and Deutsche Börse. It assists oncologists in providing the best care for their patients. Oncologists are doctors that treat cancer. It has recently developed a 20 minute test to detect if an individual has developed antibodies to COVID following vaccination or exposure to the virus. Amazon is working with this company to sell the test on its website to physicians. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, 82 million market cap. They're trading at 361 a share and they have 23 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they do have negative free cash flow each year because they still have small revenue as they're growing their business. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's negative every year as well. Revenue is a sales for the company and that looks okay, growing from 3 million up to 7 million. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is cost of revenue, and these are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit, and their gross profit grows from 225 million up to 1.5 billion. So that looks really good. Below that is operating expenses. They probably spend a lot in research and development as well as marketing. Gross profit minus operating expenses gives you your operating income, and that's negative every year. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt, and the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which of course is negative every year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash, because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. They spent over $300,000 in CapEx in the trailing 12 months. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow, which of course is negative every year. Since they have negative free cash flow, they're using debt and equity to run their business. They issued $4 million of debt in 2018 and $2.1 million in 2019. Also $787,000 in 2020. But most of their capital is coming from equity. They raised $2 million in 2018, 6.6 .6 million in 2019 and 8.9 million in 2020. Every time a company raises equity, that increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. Let's look at the capital structure. 15 million of equity, 1 million of debt. They're 95% equity, 5% debt. And their WAC is almost 23%. That's a really high WAC because it's a very risky stock. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated seven years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year seven, that's 107 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $28 million. We divide that by 23 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 122. They're trading at 361, so they're trading at a 196% premium. It's a sell according to the model. The way I estimated their future revenue and future free cash flows, I looked at their competitive financials. I also looked at their financials and their business model. I looked at the market as a whole and tried to estimate what percent of the market they would have. I estimated their revenue would be around $200 million by 2027 and they would convert about 10% of that into free cash flow. That's how I came up with the $21 million. And the previous free cash flows just backed into the $21 million. If I did a discounted cash flow model on AT&T, 90% of my estimation would be on the company's history and their financials. 10% would be guesswork. With this company, 
it's the opposite. 10% of the estimation is based over the company's financials and history, and 90% is guesswork. This top chart is the stock price since it started trading. So it looks like it was trading close to $170 a share at one point, but it was never this high. It's just because they did a 1 for 15 reverse stock split. So you have to divide these numbers by 15 to get the actual stock price. This is where the stock has been trading the past year. So it looks like it peaked at close to $7, and then it came crashing down, and it was pretty flat for a while, and recently the price was driven up, although it has been coming down a little bit the past few weeks. The company's stock price can change a lot based off of news headlines, also market sentiment, but it's generally not based off of financials, because they're not making money yet. Although some people may be buying the stock, thinking their financials will be strong in the future, but right now, they're pretty weak. They have a really high beta, 2.7, so the stock moves almost three times the market. It's very volatile. The stock has gone up 350% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 38%. The 52-week low was 80 cents. Imagine if you got this stock at 80 cents. You could have made a lot of money, even if you sold it now at 360. The 52-week high was 918. And the stock is trading above its 200-day and 50-day moving average, so it seems to be on an uptrend. This is a really liquid stock. 10 to 14 million shares are traded each day. Of the 23 million shares outstanding, 22 million are on float, 5% are held by institutions, and about 9% of the shares on float are shorted. In the past year, this stock has gone up 350%, while its industry went up 36%, and the market went up 45%. But in the past three years, this stock has gone down 46%, while its industry went up 60%, and the market went up 62%. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 59%, its industry 13%, and the market 15%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 40%, its industry 7%, and the market 9%. In the past five years, their annual earnings increased 4%, its industry 13%, the market 12%. In the past year, their earnings grew 51%, its industry 60%, and the market 20%. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you'd be at $157 today. That's a 98% loss. Those reverse stock splits really kill you over time. The biggest shareholder is David Cohen. He's a director at the company. The next biggest is Vanguard, Renaissance, Geo, and Susquehanna. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average P.E. in the market is 33, the median is 22. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the P.E. Their price to sales is 12.2, so investors are paying $12.20 for $1 revenue. Their price to book is 5.6, that's between the market median and average and price to book is stock price over book value per share. Book value per share is equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and they have 15 million of equity, negative 1 million of tangible equity, since they have 15 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. Their current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can cover 90% of their current liabilities with their current assets. And their current assets are cash of 2.3 million, 600,000 of receivables, and 470,000 of inventory. The company does seem to be undercapitalized. They had negative $7 million of free cash flow. They're a little short in working capital, so they have negative $8 million of funding. So they're going to need more debt or equity financing to run their business over the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of three other companies in the same industry as Precipio. And if Precipio has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE because they're negative. Only one company on this list has a positive PE. They do have the best price to sales and price to book of all the companies. They're doing bad in current ratio. They're doing bad in ROE. They are low in debt. And they're the smallest company on this list at 82 million market cap. Illumina is the biggest by far at 59 billion. The others are pretty small relative to them. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 196% premium. The recent news about them is exciting with Amazon selling their product over their website. 
they really need to start generating more sales and developing more products for them to become a big player in this space. They do have a long road ahead, but you never know, anything is possible. I rank their free cash flows 1 out of 10, their revenue 2 out of 10, and their ratios 3 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.